Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video and today we're going to be exploring the locator bar in version 121.6. The locator bar is this thing here at the bottom of my screen. And by default it only shows players, but you can actually get it to show entities and with the power of resource packs you can do so much more. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to use these waypoints on regular entities without even having a multiplayer server. So in your world, we have this pig here. All I'm going to do is type slash attribute. And then since we're looking at the pig, it'll suggest as UUID if we click on that. And then we say Minecraft waypoint transmit range. Then we type base set. And then we can choose the value. This is how far we want the waypoint to be visible. So I'm going to go ahead and set 1000 because basically anytime we're anywhere near this pig, we want to be able to see it on our locator bar. And there we go. We can see the pig on the locator bar. As you can see, when you turn your head, it moves to follow the pig. And if we go farther away, we can still see it. Even if we go around the corner here, we can still see where our pig is. The next thing we can do is modify the color of the icon on the locator bar. And I've got it set to this lovely little pink color, which is perfect for a pig, but maybe you had a different animal or maybe you just liked a different color. We can type slash waypoint, modify. And then again, since we're looking at the pig, we get a UUID and we type color gold, for example. And just like that, the waypoint is now gold. If you wanted to use a hex color, you can type color hex and then input any hex color you want. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is a nice dark blue color. There we go. Let me set this back to the pink color we had before. And then we'll explore the other side of this feature that we're going to actually be able to extend using our resource pack. So we'll type slash waypoint, modify, again, select our pig, and this time we'll say style and we'll set it to bow tie. And as you can see, the shape on the locator bar turns into a bow tie shape instead of a circle. In our custom resource pack, we'll actually be able to define a custom one of these, a custom style of locator bar waypoint. So we can have any shape that we want on our locator bar. And don't forget, if you are enjoying the video, to leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more stuff just like this in the future. To start, we'll open up our resource packs folder right here. And we can create a new folder in here called Waypoint. If we open this up, we'll create another new folder named Assets. And inside of there, another new folder called Waypoint again. So we've got our resource packs, Waypoint, Assets, Waypoint. Inside of the first waypoint folder, we'll also want to create a new text document and we'll name this hack.mcmeta. Make sure you have deleted the dot text at the end and replaced it with mcmeta. You should see this pop up come up right here. Click yes. We'll open this up and inside of here, we'll type an opening bracket hack with a, with a colon, another opening bracket hack format. And we'll set that to whatever pack format version you have for your version. The version I'm in, it's 62. So I'll leave a link in the description with a list of how you can find your pack format version for resource packs. Make sure you scroll down to the resource pack section in that link. But anyways, we can also set a description. And we'll say, adds a custom waypoint style. Then we'll close out our two sets of opening brackets and save this file and it should be good to go. However, there's nothing in it. So let's go ahead and add something. For this, I'm gonna switch over to VS Code and I've already got my waypoint folder open inside of the editor here. Inside of assets, waypoint, I'll create a new folder called waypoint style. Inside of there, I'll create a new file and we'll call this x.json. This is because our custom style is gonna be named X since it's gonna look like an X. And now what we get to do is we get to define a few different keys. The first one is near distance. And let's set this to 64. I'll explain what this does in a second. 
Next we have sprites. And for now we're just gonna have a single sprite. It's just gonna be an X. So I'm gonna say waypoint, which is our namespace, X, and save that. The near distance, if we had multiple sprites, it would be at what point it transitioned from the first sprite into the second sprite. However, we don't have multiple sprites, so it's always gonna use this first sprite right here. Next, I wanna go out of this waypoint styles folder and into our main waypoint folder. We'll create a new folder, and we'll actually create a few new folders. We'll go textures slash GUI slash sprites slash HUD slash locator bar dot. And inside of here is where we'll define the textures. So let's go ahead and move over to paint.net. And I'm going to create a new file with a size of nine by nine pixels. Press OK. And here's where we define our locator bar dot texture. For reference, let's pull over the bow tie texture. And I'm going to open this. And as you can see, the background is transparent, and then the center is actually on a scale of black to white. And black pixels will show up as black, and white pixels will show up as whatever color the waypoint is set to. So if you set it to pink, for example, all of these white ones will be set to pink, and then the ones that are halfway gray and white will be set between halfway gray and pink. So that's how it's going to be for our waypoint color. So let's go back to our custom waypoint and I'm going to delete everything so that we have a transparent background. And just to be simple, I'll create a simple white X and I'll surround it with black. Now let's save this and put it in our resource pack. And we'll save this file in our resource pack, assets, waypoint, textures, GUI, sprites, HD locator, bar dot. And here we'll name this x.png and we'll save. Click OK. And now let's go back to VS Code and we can see the name we gave it is what we define here. So we named it x and we put it in our waypoint namespace. So that's where the game is going to look for our file, where we put it right here. And now it should be ready. So back in Minecraft, we press F3T to reload our resource packs. And it still shows the bow tie, but that's because we haven't changed the style on our entities data yet. So let's type slash waypoint, modify, select our pig, type style, and we'll set waypoint x. Remember to use your namespace here. It's very important. If you just type x, it will not work. It'll assume you want the Minecraft namespace. And of course, there's nothing called x in the Minecraft namespace. So press enter, and there we go our waypoint shows up as an X just as the texture we defined. And of course, if we wanted to, we could easily change this texture. So maybe we want to have a little bit of a gradient. So I'll select that and I'll maybe make it a little bit darker. And maybe this is our updated texture. So we can save it, go back to the game F3T, and our new texture shows up on screen. As you can see, the pixels that are in the middle between black and white on our texture show up as in the middle between our pink color and the black color in the game. Next, let's go ahead and add a couple more sprites, and we'll use these when the player moves farther and farther away from the entity being tracked. In VS Code, we'll go ahead and define our new sprites inside of our waypoint style JSON file, and let's change this near distance. In fact, we'll change this to be four. So if the player is within four blocks of the entity, then it will show this first thing. Otherwise, it's gonna show waypoint small x. So if they're farther than four, and we'll use far distance, and we'll set that to 32, and that's where it's going to show waypoint extra small x. So let's go ahead and duplicate this x texture twice, and we'll rename it to small x as well as extra small x and inside of paint.net we'll open these up for our small x here i'm just going to remove one little layer off of this texture save that and then we'll do the same thing for the extra small x except we'll do two layers off now we should be able to go back to the game 
reload the texture pack with F3T. And as we move farther away, we can see it goes from the large X to the small X, and from the small X to the extra small X down here. And that's pretty cool. The closer we are to the entity, the bigger this little waypoint indicator is. Now, if you wanted to, in between the near distance 4 and the far distance 32, you could add even more sprites like this and rename these to different things, as well as give them their own textures, remember? And those will appear in order the farther away you get between near distance and far distance. So far distance is where it will always show this last waypoint, and near distance is where it will always show this first one. However, in between, it will interpolate between these numbers and pick the appropriate sprite from this list. So you can have as many sprites as you want in here, and you can get really detailed with the locator bar textures. However, I think that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed playing around with the locator bar, and I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.